I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with a familiar looking color palette. These five colors are colors I originally pulled when I was using a field of lavender flowers as inspiration for an episode of Dye Pop PS. But when I went to film that video, I just used these three colors in the middle. Because of the breaking that they had, I ended up not including the darker purple or the less bright, the deeper moss green, into our final project. And the yarn we created over there was absolutely beautiful and stunning. But today, I wanted to see what I would create if I used all five colors I had originally pulled. And I'm not necessarily going for the same overall kind of technique, but I'm going to let these colors speak to me and see where we end up. I do want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Kathleen. Kathleen, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I'm going to be doing one other thing differently today from the way I normally do things. When I'm dyeing yarn immersion with dry dye powder, I usually have a max of 300 grams of yarn in the pan at any given time. Well, today I'm going to try to do this with 400 grams of yarn in the pan and we'll see where we go. With more yarn in the pan, it's gonna probably require more flips to dye the yarn to get coverage. But again, we're gonna see where we go and where we end up, and hopefully it'll be someplace really, really fun. Now, our yarn base today is Wool to Dye For's Krypton Sock. Uh, this yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, and unlike Wool to Dye For's Platinum or Knit Pick Stroll, this yarn happens to be three ply instead of four ply. And I have it pre-soaking over there. It's pre-soaked for an hour or so in just some plain tap water with no additional acid. Bringing over the yarn. I didn't squeeze out all the water because we're just gonna add some water back in. Now, I pre-soaked 500 grams of yarn, 400 grams that we're gonna have here in the pan, and then 100 grams that we'll use for our yarn mop, which is a skein. I'll add some acid to it, uh, but I will wipe the dry dye powder off of my gloved fingertips onto that skein to create a fun complementary colorway. Now the yarn does fit in here rather well, but you can imagine that if you only had 200 grams of yarn in the pan, you can spread it so much more. And so it is a lot more compact and that means that there's going to be yarn that when I flip less there will be more yarn that will be in the middle and never on the surface. But we can hopefully counteract this a little bit and we'll I mean we'll see where we're going. Here I have approximately eight cups of water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. And this has us in a situation where the water level just about covers the yarn. There's a little bit of water on the surface, but you can really squish it and move that liquid around. I'm gonna set up more water with this proportion to have off camera. That way, if I feel like I need to add more liquid, I can do that with a turkey baster. But now I'm gonna heat things up. And once things are warm, I'll go and put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, so we can start dyeing the yarn. I'm gonna start with the two purples. And I'm sort of speckling right now, but I plan to allow these colors to spread a little bit. I need to make sure that I don't go too all over, all over, but I do want to pay attention to the ends of these skeins a little bit. So this was the lilac, but you could see that even with the concentration of acid I have right now, we are getting some speckles, but I am also able to spread things out a little bit. Lilac is a color that does break. It has blues and reds in there. Okay, and this is helpful to see how fast it is going because this means that it's not going to go through that many layers. <laughs> so we'll probably have to move things a lot. Okay, this is some royal purple now. And one thing I could do to help things strike a little bit less fast would be to add more powder in any of the positions. 
As I switch between colors, okay, this one is a lot more pigmented. Royal Purple is a color that strikes pretty quickly. It's a great one for glazing, just FYI. And the tone is similar to Lilac, but it is also different. And so I don't mind if we end up with some speckling. I'll probably add more of both of these purples on here eventually. But for now, I'm getting a feel for what the colors want to do. And then that'll help me decide where to go. When I'm switching colors, I wipe my gloves. This is lichen now. I wipe my gloved fingertips off uh, on the yarn mop that I have off camera. And then I dry them before we go into the next dry powder color. I need to remember that there's four skeins of yarn here. Ugh, lichen is so pretty. I am so used to typically having three skeins that I have a good feel about like where I place the colors, where one skein ends and another begins. And I don't have as good of a feel of that here today. That's okay. And now here is our moss, which I think is going to be very similar to the lichen, but a little bit, honestly, it'll probably be a little bit brighter almost. And I'm almost thinking that I might be inclined to do more of the big color placement with the royal purple and moss and speckle with the lichen and lilac. But we'll see how things go. Although I will say the moss is giving us some speckles too that's striking pretty quickly. And since I don't mind if we end up with some speckles on here, if I don't work a color through fast enough, that is totally fine by me. And I'm also okay with there being some whites left behind. Okay, finally I have the blued steel, which I think is the most pigmented color of all of them and I know we will get some spread from this but this one I'm not going to spread out I'm intentionally well, well okay I did have a heavier splotch there because some powder fell <laughs> but I'm intentionally going a little bit light with this color all over uh, but again in that one area I was a little bit heavier. So, there may be uh, some differences. <laughs> and just to give you a little feel for where our yarn mop is at right now, we have a little bit of all the colors. But this is looking really beautiful, even with some of those darker <laughs> uh, blued steel spots. Blued steel, I think, sometimes can break almost brown. So we'll see if that happens. But there's also browns in the moss and the lichen as well. I think I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for about 10 minutes before we flip the yarn to dye the other side. I might wait less time with subsequent flips, but I have that amount of time on the timer. And so that's why I'm gonna wait 10 minutes instead of five. <laughs> it's been 10 minutes. And the way we'll know if we have to do a million flips later is when we flip this over, <laughs> we see a little bit of some color, which means that we will get a little bit of coverage into the middle. But yeah, we're gonna need to do multiple, multiple flips because we're gonna want to get some more coverage all over and again I don't mind if there's some white left behind but you don't want to have a flip or move the yarn inside out and see this much white so I am just trying to move the yarn around so that way things are spread out but now I'm gonna go mask up again and we'll carry on if you want even more spread of the colors through the different layers of yarn, then I would recommend having even more water when you start because the more that the yarn can kind of float versus be a little bit compressed uh, when it's sitting in the hot dye bath, the more space there is for the dye to dissolve and travel around skeins versus sort of being trapped where you place it originally. It isn't a bad thing to need to dye a layer, wait five to 10 minutes, dye another layer, wait five to 10 minutes and carry on that way, just because I can work on another project in the middle and things like that. I just need to 
pay attention uh, to make sure I get the coverage that I want in the end. Whereas if I had fewer skeins, maybe I would only need to do uh, two or three additional flips after the first one, but I have a feeling I'll just do a few more here. It could be interesting to see how many flips I need to do based on the number of skeins in the pan, but that does depend a lot on the pigments themselves, how much they spread, how quickly they strike, and the water level, and there's lots of other little variables in there. But anyway, as soon as I was satisfied with the amount of coverage we had here on the yarn, I let things heat for 30 minutes from the last time I added dye. It has been 30 minutes from the last time I added dye, and I just turned off the heat. And now I'm going to remove the yarn. There are, are still some lighter patches, but that's something that I was okay with. Ugh, this is really, really pretty. And I feel like I added a lot more dye than the last time, but I don't know. And since I don't have any of those other skeins around, it would be hard to compare. But I think that using more colors, even when the colors are close to each other, gives us more dimension in the end. And since we have this dye bath set up already, I'm gonna bring over the yarn mop. And you can see immediately we are having some colors spread out. I recently had a super valid question asking why I would waste a skein of yarn to make a yarn mop. And that's valid, but waste is sort of in the eye of the beholder. For me, these yarn mops aren't a waste because they're beautiful skeins of yarn that I can sell in my Etsy shop. And I have customers who love to buy these super random fun colorways. But if you're dyeing yarn for your own personal use, you may not want to create a yarn mop because maybe that's not the type of colorway that you want to knit or crochet or weave with. And that is perfectly valid uh, as well. You don't need to start with a skein of bare yarn to use as a yarn mop. You could use remnants from another project if you really want, or you can just rinse your gloves off and not have a yarn mop at all. It's totally up to you. But I love being able to create something beautiful with that extra dye that's on my gloved fingertips. I have the yarn mop in this pan too, but just look at those subtle speckles. It's so pretty. But now I'm gonna wash all five skeins together. And can you see what I was referring to when I said, okay, the yarn mop uh, maybe may not have a lot of contrast this time, and so it may not be a good skein for fade, but it also could be. It might have a lot less white in it. We'll see them when they're dry side by side. The good news, first dunk, I'm not seeing any color bleeding. I'm gonna add a little dish soap, and we're gonna fill up the basin. I typically label my yarn mops on the tag that I label them in just in case because color wise then I know if I'm grabbing the right skein because I'll be able to tell the difference when we look at this finished dried yarn but when it's amongst all the other yarn that I have then it can be a little harder to tell but anyway I'm not seeing any color bleeding here which is always wonderful all the dye is on our yarn so I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and go hang it up to dry. So then we can come and look at the finished yarn. One thing I didn't do while working on this video was reference the original Lavender Fields colorway that I dyed using three of the five colors we used today. I honestly think it's a little tricky for me to pick out the different colors and the different hues. I mean, okay, I think here, is probably our lilac versus our royal purple. It, the differences are so subtle, and the same with the greens, but we have a lot of dimension in this yarn, which is lovely. We had dimension in the original colorway as well because lichen breaks and lilac break, and that brings some different hues into those colors to begin with. The only other thing I wanna point out is that sort of this background color of the yarn is not white, it is a little bit gray. Uh, there is some pigment that did spread a little bit all over, uh, which is great. It sort of makes this soft, almost like a foggy morning um, watching a vine creep up. 
The Yarn Mop and the main colorway here are extremely similar. The Yarn Mop here has a couple speckles, but less speckles overall. Plus we have some larger patches of the blued steel on here. And I would say the background color is a little bit more blue, a little bit deeper. And some of the patches of color are bigger and a little bit softer where we have more patchy, less smooth transitions on our main colorway. But really, I feel like the presence or absence of those blued steel speckles are the dominant difference between the colorways. Kathleen, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really enjoyed dyeing up this colorway and I absolutely adore the yarn and I hope you will too. If you want to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Kathleen, go and check out the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Lab partners get to pick the yarn base you want me to dye, some colors to avoid, and then you get some shout outs in the video. And the whole thing's a lot of fun. Please message me on Etsy before you check out if you have any specific requests or themes that you might like to see and we can chat about that more. Kathleen, thank you again. I don't dye the same colorways over and over very often. And it's not because I wouldn't enjoy that. It's because I don't know how much you, the viewers, might enjoy that. Uh, certainly, I love to revisit something, especially if it's something I did a long time ago. There are color combinations and themes that are definitely favorites of mine that come up again and again. But specifically going back and re-dyeing something I've done isn't something I do as much. And if you want to see me try to recreate things I've dyed more in the past, I'd be happy to give that a shot. Uh, just let me know down in the comments, uh, both if that's something that you would enjoy watching, but also if there's a particular colorway you wanna see me play with again. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Uh, this is by far the biggest way you can help support the content here. And I already mentioned my Etsy shop, but I also have a Patreon. Uh, you can go learn more at patreon.com slash chemnets, which is a way that you can uh, support the channel and contribute a little bit directly without buying yarn. <laughs> Although at certain levels there are uh, permanent Etsy coupons, uh, depending on the level you pick. And so you can go and check that out. Oh my gosh, I just love this more dirty green against the vibrancy of the purple. It really is so floral. And we could play around with the moss and lichen with so many different colors. Imagine doing something like this with pink or with orange or even a brighter yellow uh, just to get that sort of floral effect. I think that that could be absolutely stunning. Man, there's so many times when I look at something and I can visualize it with different colors and then I want to create a collection like it in so many different colors. <laughs> That's just where my brain goes. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.